Alrighty, welcome to Vintage Cube League Draft. It's in the Magic Online Vintage Cube, and uh, this cube's got some weird stuff going on, so we'll, we'll, we'll point it out when we get to it. It's just a lot of card changes from the normal Magic Online Vintage Cube, and uh, I think I'm just going to first pick Balance here. I like Balance. Balance is a fun card to build around. can be really strong as well. There's also Preordain and Flooded Strand. Also Smuggler's Copter, although... You know, I'm a little down on Smuggler's Copter. It's still a good card, certainly, but I, I've i been a little less impressed with it recently. I think, I don't know, I think maybe it's that uh, you need a pretty decent creature count, so it just doesn't fit in quite as many decks. But I, I'm going to start with Balance. I really like building around Balance. I, can, I find that to be pretty fun. Oh, wow. This pack's pretty strong, too. There's Atroxa, Oko, and 4th Eorlingus. So... What am I going to take here? Mm. I think... I think I might just take 4th Ear Link. Uh, it's pretty good. Oko's good. Oko is by far the best of these cards with balance. Because Planeswalkers and balance are good. In fact, Oko can even... Plus one, make one of their artifacts, like a Mox or a Talisman, into a creature. And then you balance it away. I kind of like that. That sounds cool. Alright, I'll, I'll take Oko. And I think that Atroxa is a great card, of course. But... Uh, I don't know, I'm kind of interested in building a balance deck. Now I'm probably going to take Jace here. Just Planeswalkers and Balance is a great strategy. There's a Hex Drinker as well, and a Lion's Eye Diamond, and a Vampiric Tutor. And those are all all fine cards. But I think Jace fits really nicely with this uh, start here of Balance and Oko. Could be a kind of like Bant control deck. Maybe have a lot of artifacts, like with balance, I'm looking for those. Sometimes you have like the lands aspect. Zern Orb balance is also really nice. Once you have Zern Orb, you know, maybe if you get that fast bond crucible action. A lot of different threads to unravel here, but I think that balance is a powerful enough card to build around, and I like the that how Oko fit with balance more than Atroxa or Fourth Eorlingus. Ooh, perfect. Now we'll take Teferi Time Raveler. This is shaping up to be a nice little Bant Super Friends list over Chrome Host Seed Shark and Snapcaster Mage mainly, but th this is fantastic. Here's where we really want like a Mox Diamond. Mox Diamond would be so good with this start, but I I'm excited to get some mana fixing, get some artifacts, some talismans, and uh, we got a stew going here. All right. All right, so this pack's kind of interesting. Uh, I'm curious as an exercise to the reader, what do you think I'm going to pick? Because I know what I'm going to pick. It's going to be a five mana spell, and it's not Time Warp. It's actually Lorien Revealed. Lorien Revealed has really gone up in my power rankings. Just the flexibility of card draw spell versus land is great, but then you add in the fact that it can go get Tundra or Tropical Island, and all of a sudden, you know, any blue duel, it just becomes an amazing card. I do like Sylvan Library as well. And, well, Coveted Jewel is great in some decks, not so much this, but I think Lorien Revealed is the pick here. Time Warp is good with these Planeswalkers, but honestly... Untapping with adjacent play is a pretty big ask already, so I'm not going to do that. Whoa, what is going on here? A little six-pick Solitude, no big deal. Yeah, I'm going to take it. Solitude's a fantastic card. And even with uh, balance, I mean, you're still going to want other ways to kill creatures. So I like Thopter Foundry specs. I like Sensei's Top is good with balance, but Solitude is too strong to pass up. And then now I'm probably interested in Brainstorm. There is a blue-green Talisman, but... You know, I think Brainstorm with one shuffle effect plus hiding cards for balance. I think that's enough for me to want Brainstorm over a Talisman. Talismans are pretty uh, replaceable. Oh, Skyclave is probably the best card here. And now I'm shaping up to just be blue-white, maybe splashing Oko. But I'm going to take Skyclave here over really nothing that even comes close. So this is looking like a real classic blue-white control deck. Though I'd probably still take Watery Grave here. On the other hand... Soul Guide Lantern is a is a combo with balance. It lets you store a card in play. I don't think I want Once Upon a Time because I don't have a lot of creatures in this deck. I don't think Elspeth or Zerd is what this deck wants. So it's really Watery Grave versus kind of marginal playable. Let's just take Watery Grave. This deck could easily want like a Demonic Tutor or something like that. Maybe that Vampiric Tutor wheels. Who knows? Just with Lorien Revealed, taking a blue-black duel seems like pretty good value. All right. Well, you know, I don't often make this pick, but I think I'm going to take Wrath of God over Blade Splicer. This is just looking like a Wrath of God deck. I have a bunch of Planeswalkers. So I'm going to do that. Astral Dragon's an interesting one. This is a Flash Reanimate 
sneak attack card more than anything else, but I haven't really seen it in action yet. So far, we've got a really nice blue-white control deck. It's got one Oko and one Watery Grave, but the rest are all just blue and white cards, just the way uh, Garfield intended. Whoa. Huh. First of all, rude. Lion's Eye Diamond's way too good to be in the pack still. Second, do I take Fairy Mastermind or Hex Drinker? Honestly, I think I'd take Hex Drinker. This isn't really a Fairy Mastermind deck so much, and if I end up splashing green, Hex Drinker's a great splash. Uh, Torsten versus Titania. I guess I'll take Torsten, though I don't really see myself playing either of those very much. Torsten is nice to have outs for Flash. I'm really far from playing Titania, so I don't mind passing up that. And yeah, I like where we're at. Could use some fixing. Don't have any fixing yet. I mean, Watery Grave and Lauren Reveal don't quite do it. Oh, Brazen Borrower's nice, though. Brazen Borrower, and, and look, I hope you don't get sick of me saying this. It is good with balance. Balance is just the kind of card I really want to build around, though. I'll take Tribal Flames. I mean, Gruel Turf, yeah, the, the, the bounce lands are kind of weird, but, you know. What, are we going to do some cube brewing? Um, balance is a common card I really don't mind you know, kind of warping a lot of my picks around, and Brazen Bar is legit good with balance. You bounce their thing, the Brazen Bar chills in the adventure zone, and then you cast balance, and this is not equalized, then you later cast it. Uh, this is kind of a bad pack. I could Parallax Wave here. It's a pretty strong card. I have a couple creatures that are decent with it. It's that or Spell Pierce, and they're both pretty good. Don't think I'm in the market for Scrubland or Baleful Strix all that much. Flickrisp is just, it's fine and might even wheel, given how open white seemed to be. Um, you know, I actually, I'm actually i actually kind of not liking the Parallax Wave here. I would probably play it if it wheeled, which it shouldn't. But I have Wrath, I have Balance. I'm not really getting aggressive and removing their blockers, whereas that card really shines. I think I'm going to take Spell Pierce. It seems like that's what this deck needs more. And, oh, there's Force of Will. Great Force of Will deck. That's a way to speed up a deck that has no mana acceleration. Free spells. Solitude and Force of Will now. If we're lucky, Colonnade or Breeding Pool or Prismatic Vista. One of those three might wheel. Let's see. Miscalc, Fiery Confluence, Ren and Six, Green Suns. Yeah, there's enough other cards that I could definitely see one of uh, those lands wheeling. Well, now I get to get to, get to take one. Hallowed Fountain is the most important anyway, because now that I have Hallowed Fountain, Lorien Revealed is a blue-white land as well. And if Timeless Dragon comes back, that will be one as well. But uh, yeah, we're taking Hallowed Fountain here by a mile. And then this pack has not a whole lot I'm interested in. This is really not an Ancient Tomb deck. It might just be a Pentad Prism deck. Prism fixes mana. Again, sits in play for balance. And maybe speeds this deck up. Turn 2 Prism could be like a turn 3 Jace the Mind Sculptor. An early wrath if I need it. Plus, this pack's just really bad. And yeah, I mean, Smirk Tide Regent, Weathered Wayfarer, like these are just not cards I want to put in my deck here. So I'm going to take those, though balance will remain prominently displayed. All right, and this pack is much better for me, honestly. I mean, there's Oracle of Moldiah, which I don't even like that much, though I guess it's okay with Brainstorm and Jace. Court of Garenbrig is actually a pretty strong card, but certainly not for me. I, I don't really want Overgrown Tomb. I mean, I guess I could open up a Black Splash, but I don't even have a single black card. Mother of Runes is not really what this deck wants. I guess I'll take Oracle and be kind of unhappy. Well, there's Zernor for balance, but I'm not passing up on a Palace Jailer. Palace Jailer is great. Palace Jailer into Wrath is a fantastic combo. Palace Jailer with Planeswalkers is great. Palace Jailer back by Force of Will or Solitude is great. And one, two, three, four, five. It is technically possible Zernorb could wheel. Here, huh. It's got another set of options. I'm not going to take Courser or any of these cards up until Thieving Skydiver, Unexpectedly Absent, and Samwise. And those are, they're all kind of interesting. I'm thinking... Do I want Skydiver or Absent? I don't think I want Samwise. I think my cards aren't going to die quite often enough to make it worth it. And honestly, these two green cards, Hex Drinker and Oracle, are probably not even going to make the cut unless I pick up a bunch of mana fixing. I do like Absent, but I really like Skydiver. I found Skydiver to be a pretty impressive card. I don't think I want any of the bounce lands that just make a slow deck slower. Raven Inspector is kind of nice. It's, it, it pitches to Solitude. It blocks for Palace Jailer. Gives you a 
a clue you can turn into a creature with Oko. I think I like that more than Portable Hole. Parallax Wave and Flickerisk did wheel. Now I'm going to take the Parallax Wave because Parallax Wave, with now that I have like Inspector and Palace Jailer, becomes a lot more uh, enticing. All right, no one's playing white. Colonnade, fantastic wheel. That's the best land I could wheel probably. No, Breathing Pool might actually be better. I'm taking Colonnade over Monastery Mentor. This deck does not need another slow card. Oracle and Hex Drinker, I'm, I'm going to treat as them being out. I'm going to put Borrow under the Bounce Spell. I would, and Water Grave, I'm going to take out too. I still would like to play this Oko if possible. And we have a Pentad Prism. We have Lorien Revealed if we could get a Triome or a Tropical Island. We know the Breathing Pool is gone. But even without the Oko, this is still 16 playables and straight blue-white. Oh, Odawara and Timeless Dragon both wield. This is looking like a Timeless Dragon deck. I think having an extra threat would be pretty nice here. I'm going to put it in a two-drop slot as a cycler. Sure, I'll take Withered Wayfarer. Why not? Um, I'm not going to play Psy. I guess I'll take Mother of Runes. You know what? This deck actually is shaping up to a deck that would play Mother of Runes. And, oh man, Zernor versus Figure of Destiny. I'll take the Zernor. I, I just don't think I'm going to play Figure. Wow, free, unexpectedly absent. All right, no, no one's playing white. That is clear. Here, another kind of weak pack. I'll just take Trop. Trop adds a green source plus a second green source with Lorien Revealed. And then, I mean, Hero Blade Hold and, well, Deserted Beach is probably going to wheel too. So there's also, whoop, well, that's not what I want at all. It's an old team draft deck. Uh, there's also True Name Nemesis. True Name's pretty good. It's pretty good with Palace Jailer. The thing is, the reason I took the Zuran Orb over the figure is even if I end up wanting to not play Zuran Orb, figure Destiny is not going to make the cut in a deck that's going to have tons of islands. No, you know what? I'm kind of feeling like, do I want just just want the true name here? I'm already going to cut cards. Let's just take Tropical Island. I think I'd, I'm going to have plenty of playables. Now I'm just definitely going to slam Pluto Delta. There is there is Spara's Headquarters, but Pluto Delta is a Spara's Headquarters. It gets blue, white, or green, and it's all untapped. So I'm going to take that. And let's see what else. Oh, there's Fast Bond. Oh, and I have Zurin Orb. Crucible is still at large. Huh. This isn't a very good fast bond deck. I don't have any card draw except like Lorien Revealed or Planeswalkers. But if I got Crucible, would I play Crucible Fast Bond Zurin Orb? I mean, I guess so. What would my other option be? If I'm not taking Fast Bond, I guess the thing is if I'm not taking Fast Bond, I'm taking like Botanical Sanctum. Metamorph, Rex Age, Thought Scour, I guess Ranger Captain. Those are all pretty mediocre. Let's just take the Fast Bond as a spec here. Oh, love the Brain Freeze, but I think I should take Elite Spellbinder. Spellbinder's pretty good. That's an anti combo with balance. It lets them stare, store a card in the Exile Zone. I think I like that more than Vendillion Click. There's also a Temple Garden, which probably wheels. Though actually, a Spellbinder might wheel. Just because uh, not a single person is playing white, apparently. Yeah, maybe I just take V-Click for that reason. There's Channel. Doesn't do much for me. Lauren of the Third Path is a pretty great card. Let's just take that over Steam Vents. I don't have any red cards or a desire to, to pick any up. We got a couple new cards here. I mean, this is 18 lands. Oh, there's the Crucible. Yeah, let's take Crucible. And now we have Crucible, Fast Bond, Zurin Orb. Over, yeah, a bunch of mid stuff. And now we've got a nice little infinite combo. At that point, I wonder if uh, Oracle of Moldiah also starts to make sense. Hmm. Well, let's see. Could probably cut Mother of Runes. I just don't think I'm going to have that many creatures. And this is now, this is 16 land counting Lorien revealed, but I could probably cut a couple cards. I also have like Timeless Dragon, Pentad Prism. All right, let's see what else we got here. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of like kind of weird cards. Intuition, I'm not really sure. I, I could see decks that would want Intuition, but not this one. I don't think I want any of the double green cards either. I don't really want Spellseeker. Spellseeker for balance isn't even that great of a combo, and I'm not going to play Lotus Petal in this deck. I guess I could take Jace, Wielder of Mysteries. Sure, there's also a Vindicate to go with Watery Grave, but I don't think I'm going to play that. One high tide. 
Sail into the West makes Fast Bond a little bit better. I could see that. This could be a Sail into the West deck. Alternately, I could just take like Cathar Commando or Seal of Removal or Nature's Claim. Yeah, let's just take Sail into the West if maybe I end up playing it. True Name Wield, so did Deserted Beach and Frantic Search. Um, okay, I'll, I'll take the True Name. I have been convinced. And then these are all cards I don't care about. I mean, I guess I could take Sakura Tribal. I'm still going to be blue-white, kind of splashing green. I've got a couple too many cards. Oh, Botanical Sanctum Wield. Yeah, I'll take it over a Thought Scour and some random white creatures that I'm not going to play. I could probably cut the Pentad Prism at this point. Mm, I like Sail into the West. I like Spell Pierce Brainstorm. I could cut Absinthe. I have Brazen Borrower. And do I want to cut... Thraben, I kind of like the Thraben Inspector. Elite Spellbinder didn't wheel, but I'm not too worried about that. Sylvan Safekeeper is kind of a backup Zurin Orb, except it does it makes you pay the life for Fast Bond still, so it doesn't really seem like what I want to do. I mean, I am playing, I think 17 land, or 16 land, plus Lorien Reveal and Timeless Dragon sounds about right. It just means I have to cut one more card. Uh, I'm not playing any of those. Tamiyo Collector of Tales is also kind of interesting. I guess I'm not playing Copperline Gorge anyway, so... Let's see. Maybe I just don't play Oracle of Moldai. It is nice with Fast Bond, though. I will say that. It also can be nice with Crucible, with like this Polluted Delta, where I just get to replay uh, the Polluted Delta twice a turn. But... Probably cut the Tamiyo. I need to cut one more card. Let's see. So, I could cut, like, Vendillion Click. I'm not really beating down too much. I like Lauren. I like Skyclave. I like True Name. Yeah, maybe I just cut the Vendillion Click. All right, and then I've got a couple ways to draw cards, and then that can combine. If I, and if I get Crucible, Fast Bond, Zorn Orb, I gain infinite life and draw infinite cards. Or, sorry, infinite mana. I don't have the Horizon Canopy, unfortunately. That will let me draw infinite cards, but... With infinite life and mana, I feel like I can figure out something to win with. So I think this will be fine. There's also Jace Wheeler Mysteries, but I probably don't need to do that. Okay. Um, sort by color. So I've got four green cards. Blue white, blue white. And, oh, Lorien Revealed is a tri land. That's a tri land. That's a blue green land. So one, two, three, four green sources. So if I have like three, that'll be seven. Oh, and then there's a timeless dragon, which can't get green, but can, can get blue or white. And right now this is one, two, three, four, eight, nine blue, or nine white sources and 10, 11 blue sources. Yeah, I mean, I, I also have brainstorm to draw off of that. All right, let's see how this does. All right, time for round one. I would like to play, and all right, I'm feeling pretty good about this Oracle of Moldai right now. I get to go turn one fast bond, play two lands, and I'm gonna play them both so I can use Brazen Borrower on turn one if I need to, because who knows, maybe they'll play a one drop. <laughs> one drop that I'll also want to bounce, but you know, it could happen. And uh, if I draw a land, then I get to go kind of off with Oracle of Moldaya. I mean, I, technically, I could play like five land next turn. Who knows? And if I don't draw land, hopefully, I can cast the spell. We got we got an exciting turn coming. All right, let's go draw step. What would my worst draw be? Wrath of God or something? Uh, I'm actually gonna play Loran. I don't want to blow anything up now. The reason I'm playing Loran is I can tap Loran to draw a card, which could be pretty good if I brick again on lands. And I have Brazen Borrower to kill, an, to bounce an artifact or enchantment if I run into one anyway. Well, immediately play a Mox Diamond. Though Brazen Borrower is actually kind of good against Mox Diamond too. Okay, interesting. Am I getting like V-clicked or something? Um, let's attack, because there's Vigilance. And I'm gonna, post attacks 
tap to draw a card because I really would like to to play this Oracle of Mold. <laughs> I didn't think it would be quite this difficult. Let's hit. Let's see if they've got something. Oh, interesting. What is this? A Deceiver Exarch? Or something along those lines? Oh, Shark Typhoon. Let's draw. Because if I don't draw a land here... Oh, no, this is fine then. I was going to I was gonna potentially Brazen Borrower the Shark Token if I didn't draw a land or something to play, but this is going to work out pretty good because I'm going to cast this for one and steal that Mox Diamond. And now I can cast Oracle next turn. Of course, next turn I'm going to be drawing a land now, now that... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now that I'm going to play Oracle, let's see what they've got. They have a lot of cards in their hand. Hopefully they don't kill the Mox Diamond or steal it back. Oh, Basalt Monolith. Okay. Let's see. Draw. Oh, wow. That's the Wrath of God I was hoping not to draw. All right. Oracle of Moldiah. Any lands? Any lands? <laughs> this is really, really something. Uh, I'm going to hit and hope that they don't Basalt Monolith out something too good. It's also kind of brutal that if they kill my Oracle, I'm drawing such a bad card next turn. And I'm not feeling good about this situation. We'll see what they play. I, ha I have a lot of answers in my hand. Oh, Everflung Chalice. Okay. That I can live with. Into Skull Clamp. Sure. Into retrofitter, nice. They got they got they got a brew going. I'm not going to be running out Lauren next turn. All right, I guess I will attack, and I don't think I need to play the Zern Orb. Unfortunately, I can't do anything about that Skull Clamp. I can bounce the retrofitter token if they try to make. A retro it's kind of annoying though because if if they make a token with retrofitter and then they equip it with skull clamp oh what is this can i spell pierce this doesn't look like it ugin the spirit dragon hmm close to being able to spell pierce it my top card of course is a force of will this has been a really really agonizing game um if they ugin for four yeah, that's fine. Those are gone. I get to I get to kill Ugin here though. I mean presumably because I get to cast Brazen Borrower. And then I draw a Force of Will, which Oh, what is this? Oh, making a 1-1 one -one with retrofitter. Yeah, that's not gonna stop me. And then attack Ugin for three. I am going to lose to Skull Clamp still, though. Because my hand is just unbelievably bad. Uh, <laughs> now I'm going to draw a bunch of lands that I could have just played for free off Oracle, and instead I'm just going to just completely flood out. I, I can already tell. Okay, they made another 1-1. One, one. They're going to Skull Clamp it. I, I mean, I could Solitude it, but that doesn't really accomplish a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Dak faded. Um, well, that I can spell Pierce, which I, I definitely will. I get to attack for three, and I'm not even really sure what what I'm hoping for here. I guess I guess drawing like a Jace or something would be great. I guess if I draw a land, I could uh, hard cast Force of Will or Solitude. Mox, nice. Okay. Draw for turn. Yep, now the... It's funny, like... There was like a three-turn window where lands would have been awesome, and now they're just pretty bad. Like, I guess I could play my Zern Orb, but... Yeah, I mean, now, now I have five mana for Solitude and Force of Will, but at this point, drawing lands doesn't really help me a whole lot. Chrome Host Seed Shark. Uh... I'm going to Solitude that, actually. I could Force of Will it, but... Oh, they're not. I'm going to cast this. 
before they have a chance to put a spell on the stack. Kill that. <laughs> Unfortunately, the scrapwork mutt actually is going to keep my solitude from attacking here. One cool thing about this that people might not realize is if you unearth this and then skull clamp it, you don't you don't draw two cards. I've, I've had that happen. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if my opponent tried to do that here. We'll see. Because it looks like such an appealing combo, you unearth it and then you clamp it. But because it's unearthed, when it comes back, it doesn't uh, it doesn't get it doesn't die. It gets exiled. So the clamp actually doesn't resolve. Mm -hmm. And oh, hang her back for one. And then they could clamp it. I mean, they've drawn so many cards off Skull Clamp. I can't really imagine winning this game. The good thing is I know Loran's awesome against them. All right, well... Oh, they can sack a Thopter to make a 4-4. Mm. All right, yeah, we're done. I don't, I don't really need to draw this out. <laughs> yep. Thanks, Oracle. Uh, let's see. Don't really want Wrath of God, given that. Maybe maybe I should have just had the Hex Trinker in, though it's kind of bad against Ugin. Maybe even Dillian Click. Yeah, I guess. It's all pretty bad against Retrofitter, but I can't really stop the Retrofitter. There's Unexpectedly Absent, I guess, as another option, but no, I, I think Vanillian Click's probably going to be fine. All right, let's play first. All right, well, this hand's not very fast, but... I do get to play Loran into Palace Jailer or Oko into Palace Jailer. And from game one, Loran is looking like an awesome card for the matchup. Well, I don't like this start. All right, I need to draw. Yeah, Fast Bond would actually be a really good draw here because then I just get to play a turn two Loran. But turn three Loran could still be pretty good here. Kind of depend on what they play. If they play like a Basalt Monolith or something this turn, I will devour it. Hmm. What is this? Oh, Hanger Back. Uh, that gets Palace Jailer is what happens to that. Let's draw and cast Loran. I'm just going to eat the, the, the Mox. I feel like uh, their deck doesn't have green cards, so Talisman's like a slightly worse Mox. And if they have like Upheaval, it's a lot worse. So let's just do that. And then I'm going to Palace Jailer the Hanger back, which is a really good answer to it, because even if it comes back, it still just comes back as a 0-0. Zero, zero. So let's just do that. Hopefully I don't have a Counterspell. But I didn't see any game one, so let's do that. And then I will... Hit with Loran because if they have a Shark Typhoon, I actually wouldn't mind trading. And I'm not going to draw because I can't use the card right now. Ooh, Brazen Borrower is not bad. Okay, this this has ended up being a pretty good start. They had turn one Mox. I'm definitely not drawing with uh, Loran now. My my hand is good. They don't have anything going on. Island was even a really nice draw because now I have. Uh, Oko plus Brazen Borrower up. And let's go Oko, Thief of Crowns. Make a food and pass the turn. Draw a card off of that. Sail into the West. Not really what I'm intending to cast anytime soon here. Coalition Relic. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to Brazen Borrower, the Coalition Relic, end of turn here. Seems like a good use of my mana. And then I'm going to send for seven. And I guess I just cast the Timeless Dragon. They can't Ugin next turn. Though, if they had a, let's see, they're going to have seven mana. They're only going to be one short of casting Ugin. Mm, let's just pass then and leave Brazen Borrower casting up. Plus, maybe I'll draw Force of Will or something. I have Lethal on the board plus a Brazen Borrower coming, so I don't really need to tempt fate. Like, if they go Ancient Tomb into Ugin, I'll be really happy that I kept Borrower up. All right, 
Well, they did nothing that game. They literally did nothing. They weren't unexpectedly absent over anything. No, I don't think so. I think I like where we're at. All right, game three. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I will keep this hand. I guess I go Island Go here because it keeps up Spell Pierce and Lorien Revealed, which is going to get a Trop. And I will Spell Pierce a, a Talisman. I can't Spell Pierce the Mox, fortunately. I'll Spell Pierce Relic or Dac. Well, I can't spell Pierce Chrome Host Seed Shark. Chrome Host Seed Shark is pretty annoying. That is where uh, a Wrath would actually be helpful. Um, let's just play Colonnade. I don't really need to cycle the Timeless Dragon here. I don't even really want to use Spell Pierce this turn because if I if I'm using Spell Pierce this turn, it means that they're getting a a nice seed shark token, but I guess I have to. Hmm. I don't really even want, I could Oko the seed shark, but that seems really bad. So let's not do that. Oh, thieving skydiver, interesting. Uh, I could steal the incubator token. I mean, that's not unreasonable. I could also play true name. I think playing True Name is pretty nice because if I if I get True Name out, then they can't attack me with the token on the ground. Next turn, I can maybe play Oracle or I could play Skydiver. Either of those seem fine. Skydiver ske stealing the token didn't seem that good to me because I would have to pay mana to flip it, to transform it. And I don't really have the, the time to do that. I guess I could have done that and plane cycled. But True Name... Puts, gets me a clock into play if I want it, blocks their 4-4, and then sets up maybe me playing Oracle or something. Oh, I don't like this. Goldspan Dragon. Oh, gross. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and hope for Solitude. Jace is not actually very good here. Like, bouncing the gold span doesn't do anything. Honestly, as painful as it is, I'd probably Oko the gold span. No, I'm going to play Oracle. I'm going to go for the Gusto. Oracle, I hope to really need to hit a land here. Yeah, Zerd Orb, that's great. Uh, and then I was hoping then next turn I could play Oko plus Skydiver. I mean, I assume I'm pretty dead. They have one card left. If it's not action... Uh, okay, okay. This is a winnable game. I go to six here. True Name is doing some pretty good work keeping shark tokens from getting me. They have infinite mana now. Like, they have six, eight, nine, twelve, fourteen mana. I'm at six, but Zernor will give me a bit of a life cushion. I think that's actually a fine card to draw. I don't have to cycle on upkeep or anything. This Oracle, this is why Oracle sucks now. <laughs> I'm serious. Uh, I could cycle Timeless Dragon. I probably should. So let's do this. Let's just get a Plains. Still didn't hit a land. Land. Zern Orb. I'm just going to let them get another token. I'm going to cast this with Kicker. I think I'm going to steal their 4-4. Four, four. And pass the turn. And then I really don't even know what I'm hoping for here. I guess I can chump the gold span, go to 4. If they want to sack one of their tokens, then... I can block the 3-3 three, three token, then I'll go to 2. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's what I'm going to do. Then I'm going to draw Teferi Time Raveler. Really could use some Oracle lands, because I, I kind of need to cast two spells in one turn. That's what the Oracle play was predicated on, but it's like 
play Oracle, no land, draw, no land, cycle, no land. <laughs> it's like, well, Oracle has done a lot of nothing for me so far. But that's kind of the risk of the card and part, part of why I'm not so high on the card as I used to be. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, I'm not even going to bother. There's, they will be able to select a card that will win them the game, I can tell you that much. All right, time for round two. Let's go ahead and play first. And this hand looks okay. It's uh, it's not the best in the world, but it's, it's keepable. I'm going to lead on Plains Go. I generally don't like playing my artifacts that aren't going to do anything in play. Just because it exposes them to removal. And there's a lot more removal than discard. Also, if and my opponent like duresses me, then they're not taking Zern Orb here. So there's just no reason to let them like play a turn on Embreath Shield Breaker or whatever. Get probe, huh? Alright, alright. That'll do, that'll do. And no plays. Let's go trop. Path to turn with borrower up. And then Oko was a pretty nice little draw there. Get to probably brazen bar or anything that gets played here, unless I guess it's an artifact or something. All right. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just going to go for the Oko. If I get countered, I get countered. Nice. Let's make a token and pass the turn here. Orcish Bowmasters. Yikes. Okay. Well, Oko's pretty tough, so Bowmasters might be able to whittle it down, but isn't going to take out Oko by itself. If my opponent's got a... Okay, good. They don't have Wheel of Fortune or Time Twister this turn. That would be a disaster. And I guess I'm hoping this isn't followed by like a Lightning Bolt now that there's Red Man on that side of the board. Mm. Putrid Imp. Oh, wow. That was a good draw. Uh, let's cast Wrath of God and hope this resolves. Nice. All right, well, that, that worked out pretty nicely because now I'm going to make the food token into a 3-3 and slam. And then next turn, I don't know, I can play Parallax Wave. Recurring Nightmare. All right, well, luckily there wasn't anything discarded to Putrid Impo. Solitude's also a nice one. Let's make an Oko. Maybe I should have... Oh, actually, you know what I should have done? I think I should have just played Zern Orb last turn so I could attack with it this turn. All right, let's blow up Recurring Nightmare, which isn't a play you usually get to make. All right, I'm just going to play the Zern Orb now, actually. I'm st I'm now not going to animate the Zern Orb with Oko because I have a food token, but yeah, it would have been a lot better to have my opponent at 9 and have now lethal in play. Though I think, given my hand, I feel pretty good about the situation. Mm. Let's make this into a token. Attack. Oko's such a fast clock, it's ridiculous. And I'm going to play Parallax Wave just because I still can pitch cast Solitude. It feels fairly safe just to have that in play. Not a whole lot Grixis can do about a Parallax Wave. At least, they can't really remove it or anything. And sideboarding. I mean, there is Tamiyo, there is Hex Drinker. I think the Wrath might still be okay. Kind of like where we're at. Alright, and here on the draw... Eh, I'm not going to mulligan a hand that has uh, Oko in True Name on 3. Plus, this deck doesn't have any Moxes or anything. Fast Bond is really the only card I could draw that will speed me up. So I can't really mulligan a hand because it's too slow. I mean, well, <laughs> I certainly can mulligan a hand because it's too slow. I can't really, it's not really reasonable for this deck to hope to play a, a relevant spell like super early on like turn two. I don't have it a bunch of moxes or anything to mulligan to or even mana acceleration. I really just have the, the Fast Bond. All right. So... That was not a bad him as far as him to Turox go. Because I 
lost a wrath in a useless land keeping my two good three drops and i'm also kind of happy to have crucible because if i can go crucible and start replaying delta that's not so bad plus keeps the dream alive at some point it would be nice to crucible fast bond okay getting bashed does my opponent have a play here discard something good reanimate it no um, let's play Oko. I kind of want to get Oko on the board first because Oko getting used every turn I think is better than getting an extra three points off True Name. I even, that Spell Pierce actually might have been a really good draw. We'll see. Because I get to go True Name with Spell Pierce up next turn. Once again, getting hit by Orcish Bowmasters and kind of once again not caring that badly. Sure, you could duress. Maybe the Crucible. The Crucible doesn't even look that threatening. I wouldn't be surprised if Spell Pierce gets taken here. Because at this point, it looks like my opponent has been stuck on lands. They've missed their third land drop. So if they don't have another land in hand, they especially are going to need to take the Spell Pierce. Otherwise, can counter their next spell. Okay, let's play the Forest just to not... Give them too much information. True name and nemesis. Choose you and Oko my food token. And I kind of think I attack here. True name can block anything. It doesn't actually kill my Oko if they attack with everything. And I don't really mind that attack. And then next turn, I'll play Crucible and replay the Delta, I suppose. What is my best draw here? The funny thing is, like, Jace actually isn't that great against Bowmasters. And I don't have double white. And unfortunately, Oko can't get me double white. Be or, sorry, Crucible can't get me double white because of... Uh, the Hall of Fountain already being in play. Oh, discarding a Troxet of Putrid Imp. Mm, now I think my the odds that I am winning have gone down a bit. We don't know that my opponent has Reanimate yet because they, they had enough mana for Reanimate in the last turn. But they've drawn a third land, so they could have like Necromancy or Corpse Dance, I suppose. Shallow Grave, that sort of thing. Mm, we'll see, but if Atroxa gets reanimated, I'm probably going to lose. Because kills Oko at the very least, and then, I guess assuming they shallow graved it. Okay. And then gets draws like five or six cards, which I don't think we can be able to beat very easily. Yeah, Recurring Nightmare, there we go. And I guess I can... I could Oko it, but I don't think that's going to help. Inferno Titan, Dothy Voidwalker, Molten Collapse, Archon. Ooh, these are some pretty good cards. All right. That is unfortunate. So if I don't draw something on my turn, I think I'm just packing it up here. I'm just not, not going to win against that hand, given my, my current hand here. I guess we'll see. Opponent goes up to seven, eight cards, and it gets... Creature, Sorcery, Land... Oh, it only gets three cards. <laughs> that is kind of funny. But let me see. What are, what are those three cards? I mean, I would guess Demonic Tutor's one, but I don't even know. Let's see. Demonic Tutor, Archon, and Polluted Delta. All right. Fine with me. I drew Botanical Sanctum. Yeah, all right. Not going to win that. So playing against Rakdos Reanimator... Tamiyo is kind of okay, but that doesn't seem great. Thieving Skydiver might be bad. Haven't seen much to steal. I like Wrath still. I think Balance still pretty good. I, I'll try Tamiyo. We'll see how that does. All right. I would like to play first. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, I mean, I can't really mulligan this hand for, for kind of the same reason as I kept the last one. Like, this deck really doesn't have any anything that makes it go too particularly fast, so 
Mulliganing a hand because it's slow is like, well, you're just going to end up mulliganing a lot. Perhaps the sign of not a good deck. But who's to say? So... Do I cycle Lorien Revealed or not? I don't particularly need a land. Well, if I get Duress, I'm definitely cycling it. That would be sick, actually. Getting Duress here would be cool. Uh, I think I'll just wait. And now I'll probably cycle it. Because I don't really have a reason not to. Because if I don't cycle it now, then I'm going to want to maybe play 3-drop, at the very least Crucible, in which case having not cycled this could be a liability. Inti, Sinistral of the Sun. Well, that actually changes my mind a little bit, because let's just draw. Oh. All right, well, that's just a new play. Drawing True Name was great, because I, what I was going to do was just pass, and then... When they attack, they discard with Inti, and then I could Brazen Borrower it in response. Well, I guess I don't need to do it in response, but I could Brazen Borrower it once they get a counter on it. Now I don't really need to do that. We'll see. The way my hand is constructed, I'm not that. I don't think wasting a mana on the Lorien Revealed is going to. I'm not cycling Lorien Revealed is going to be a big deal because. I have a couple three drops. I mean, I guess I'm getting duress now. They could duress Lorien revealed. That's maybe the downside, but it's kind of dangerous to do that. Instead of taking Crucible, what if I drew Strip Mine? Well, they still took the Lorien revealed. So I, I, I did ultimately get get punished for not cycling it. Let's see. And then Blood Tithe Harvester, sure. Then on my turn, Pluto Delta would be a pretty nice little draw here. Mm, Forest is actually not terrible. Let's just go Loran. And I'm going to kill that blood token. And pass the turn. I don't think attacking is a very good idea. Killing the blood token is nice because the blood token combines with Inti. When you discard a card, you still get the Inti trigger. It also makes it so Blood Tithe can't just eat one of my things. And then next turn, if I draw a white source, I can hard cast Solitude. If I draw a non-white source, well, I guess I hope I, if I draw a land, it does produce white mana. The funny thing is about Lorien Revealed, had I drawn, let's say they hadn't arrested, they had just done something else. Had I drawn this fourth land, I still wouldn't have cycled the Lorien Revealed because I would just at that point want to cast it. <laughs> but we'll see. No plays. I'm a little scared to use Lauren because of uh, Orcish Bowmasters. I mean, let's just get the Crucible into play. I don't think I'm going to cast Brazen Borrower this turn, so I think this is fine. Let's just pass. No plays, huh? I'm not really doing anything, but neither are they. Like, should I use Lauren here? I guess a Bowmaster is not even like a disaster because... Oh, interesting. Because um, at the end of the day, it still kills one thing. I think now that they have Palantir, I'm going to draw. All right, that's not so bad. <sighs> Am I going to get milled? I, I don't care. I mean, I'll look to see what they do, but I am going to. I'm not going to let them draw a card, even if they put two on top or one on top. But I'm, I guess, kind of curious where where those are going. Mm, two, one top, one bottom. No. Archon. No. Grave Titan. Yeah. <laughs> Figured as much. Draw. Chase the Mind Sculptor. I do like that. Let's go Jace leaving blue up. Draw three. Fast Bond is not terrible, but let's see. What am I going to do this turn? I guess I could play Fast Bond and play two lands, but I don't really think that's that great for me. So let's hide. Well, I'm actually not going to hide much. I'm going to put Hallow Fountain and Fast Bond back, play my land, and, and have Brazen Borrower up. 
and technically solitude as well. Okay. Opponents on five cards in hand. They could recurring nightmare here. At that point, I'm also looking for Wrath of God. I might bounce the Palantir depending on what they do. Like if they play something and I bounce Palantir, that's kind of nice. And hopefully what they play isn't too good. Trudium's a pretty nice, nice little defender here. Protecting my Planeswalker. Let's see if they have like a Through the Breach or something. No, Recurring Nightmare. All right. Gravy T is coming back. Yep. And they're not going to attack. I'm going to bounce the Palantir before anything happens. Petty theft on the Palantir. don't think they're going to have a counterspell, but I suppose they could. And I think I'm going to use Lorien here, because if I find Zurin Orb, then I kind of get to go nuts. I get to get infinite mana and infinite life. I could, like, Teferi, do a bunch of stuff with that. Oh, they have Dark Ritual to replay the Palantir. <laughs> Very nice. All right. So I could have also just cast Grave Titan this turn, as it turns out. Well, it resets it back to one counter, which is also nice. And I think, once again, I'm just going to mill here. All right, nice. And we're both going to draw. I'm going to draw my Fast Bond, draw my Hallowed Fountain. Just go ahead and chase, I think. I guess I can start with Teferi. Because I think I'm just going to bounce the Grave Titan. And then draw. And then draw off Chase. Zern Orbs? Oh. Okay. Um, what am I going to put back? I think I can play... Yeah, I'm going to play Fast Bond... So I think I'm going to put back Island and Solitude. Oh, I also have Palace Jailer. Would it be better to play Palace Jailer this turn? Yeah, it might be, actually. So let's put back Island, Solitude. Cast Fast Bond. Land, Hallowed Fountain. Play Palace Jailer. Because I want to start drawing cards off this. And I'm probably going to let them draw off Palantir at this point. And then Palace Jailer. I just get the... I think I just take the Inti out. I, I'm just planning on not getting hit by those zombie tokens. So I'm not going to worry too much. Uh, I'm not even going to attack with Lauren. Then I'm going to draw my Solitude. So I even have Solitude up if I really need it. Though I would prefer not to evoke it. Especially since... Parallax Wave is looking really good. Opponent's got Grave Titan in hand. Five cards, four of which I don't know. And I've got pretty solid board presence. I'm getting a, every single turn that goes by. I'm I have like now I have Monarch and two Planeswalkers, so it's pretty good. Are we attacking? I'm going to get to eat one with True Name, and then I think I'll block with Loran. Uh, I mean, Palace Jailer is a nice one. Hmm. Do I want to use the Loran? I kind of do want to use Loran, so let's just block like this. I don't think I need to worry about Parallax waving my Palace Jailer and having it come back. That doesn't seem like... Something that's very likely to occur. Oh, just casting Grave Titan. Sure. All right, well, now I'm definitely going to let Palantir, let you draw off Palantir, because I'm also going to use Lauren. And because, again, if I find a... Yeah, you can draw a card. If I find Zern Orb, then I just get to, to go nuts here. 
draw, draw. Oh, balance, yes. That definitely makes Zoranorb go crazy. Let's draw, or let's j Jace, and then draw with Jace. No Zoranorbs, but I can put back two lands and then shuffle. Get a planes. Uh, let's brainstorm. <laughs> kind of an unimpressive brainstorm, to be honest. Putting two back. What I could do, I could, could, I could balance this turn down to zero cards, right? I have, well, I have seven. No, I, I, I go down to one card. Because, I mean, I guess I could solitude. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so let's put back uh, Force of Will in Island. Cast Parallax Wave. Land. Evoke Solitude. Oh, wait, I don't have to do this now. I can do this. Oh, no, I'm drawing a card at end of turn. I, was, I could do a draw step, but I don't think I want to do that. Let's hit with the true name and then go, I think, evoke solitude. I guess I don't mind my opponent gaining some life. And then parallax wave the solitude. I'm choosing to exile the grave titan just so it's doesn't get recurring nightmare or anything and then actually I don't even need to parallax wave the zombies because I can we both just have two creatures in play so then just cast balance two three four five <laughs> and I guess I can I can replay my lands with crucible oh I should have actually sacked a bunch of blue lands <laughs> Very funny. Um, actually, this costs how much to eternalize? It costs four, so wait, hold on. Oh, wait, I, I could eternalize the dragon, but then we'd each draw one. Yeah, getting a dragon in play probably makes that worth it. Oh, I didn't get enough, I didn't get the right lands in play. Nice, I sacked all my forests. All right, well. <laughs> Let's just parallax wave the two zombie tokens and pass the turn. That, okay, that, that was not that, not the cleanest execution. Though it was still a pretty good set of plays. I just definitely should have not uh, <laughs> done it exactly the way I did. Inferno Titan. Okay. And that kills my Jace, I guess. Yeah, yeah, all right. It's certainly making my life hard for no reason. Um, what I'm going to do end of turn is I'm going to, oh, you're doing that to Lauren. All right. I'm going to go parallax wave, parallax wave. And that's just the classic use up all the parallax wave tokens. Teferi's dead. They palantir. I clearly have to let them draw a card. But then Loran's going to come in, eat the Palantir. Solitude's going to come and eat the Inferno Titan. And I'm going to try to put together enough damage between Brazen Borrower. Yeah, you can draw a card. Timeless Dragon, True Name Nemesis, Loran, Solitude, all that. I still think I'm probably in good shape here, but I should have just had a Timeless Dragon and play a turn earlier. Draw, I'm just gonna draw off Jace. Eight, let's put these two back. Play Colonnade, play Delta, cast Timeless Dragon. And I have enough left, so let's sack this. I don't even think I have much left to get. All right, oh, I have a Tamio in my deck? That's actually really nice. Let's hit for three and then pass, and I can cast Force of Will. I could also cast Brazen Bar, but I don't think I'm supposed to... Ooh, nice. I don't think I'm supposed to uh, 
take two more damage in order to be able to cast Brazen Bar or Enforce a Will. No, three more damage because I have to sack my Delta. Okay. So, like I said, not the cleanest implementation of our strategy, but I think... I think we're in good shape here. Putridimp, sure. Putridimp is allowed. Wheel of Fortune, no, no, no. That... I really do not want to have happen. I could actually get decked too. So, and then I think I just Tamio back, probably a counter spell, but we'll see what we draw. If we can find Zern Orb, that'll be, that'll be nice. All right, let's just draw three. Sail into the West Skyclave. Um, Tamio. Minus three. I'm just gonna get back force of will. And attack. I think I just attack with everything. Does this have vigilance? No, I guess not. Uh the putridimp is gonna No, I guess I can just play my land and play a skyclave so putridimp so I can get putridimp out of here. And I gained three off Solitude there, so that makes me feel okay with uh, playing the Delta as well. Skyclave the Putrid Imp. And now, how much do I have? Three, six, eight. Uh, three, six, eight, twelve, fourteen. Eighteen with Celestial Colonnade. Discard a Troxa. You have no cards in hand, and I can just force all the top card. All right. It was a grind, but at least we could, kind of got to see this deck do its thing. And I can just force a will the next play. And that'll be that. Ooh, there we go. One and one. Let's get to round three, see if we can salvage a winning record out of this draft. Alrighty, time for round three. I would like to play first, and this time I will be cycling Lorien Revealed. <laughs> Look, I get to turn one cycle Lorien Revealed for Trop. Turn two, cycle Timeless Dragon for Hallowed Fountain. Then we're cooking. We've got a uh, Balance, Crucible, Oracle. We got we got some some plays. Let's see what we're up against. Stomping Ground's good news. Balance is pretty good against red green decks. Yeah, Birds of Paradise. Love to see that. Let's get Trop. Ooh, to Fairy Time Raveler. That's a nice little turn three play. Steam Vents, huh? Mana Crypt, well, okay. I'm, I'm liking this less. Th this is becoming less good. Mm, it's like a turn two Questing Beast. Yeah, okay, Questing Beast I can probably live with. Cycle this. Get, I think I get it. No, I just get a Plains. I don't really need a, the third blue that badly. All right. So here, oh, yeah, let's go Thieving Skydiver. Take that Mana Crypt. And then next turn, I am I am getting hit again, which I don't love, <laughs> but I've got, I've got some, some interesting plays to make here. I got a 12, Outland Liberator. Oh, they just kill the Mana Crypt right away. Sure. Well, in that case, and I drew a Plains, just play Sco Palace Jailer. Get that Questing Beast out, and then hit with the Skydiver. All of a sudden, we're just in great shape. <laughs> Thieving Skydiver was a 2 for 0. It killed both of those cards. I really hope they don't play like an Ovenwald Oddity, because that could be awkward. But next turn, I'll get to have uh, maybe Teferi out. As it turns out, I might not be casting this balance after all. Who knows? I might actually bring back the Dragoncito next turn. Oh, what is this? Oh, a Nyssa. Okay. Uh, that means that that's not bad at all. Let's just go to Fairy. Bounce the Nyssa token. Attack Nyssa. 
and then play a tap tallowed fountain. All right, and then draw a card end of turn. Oh, I guess because I'm drawing end of turn, maybe I wanted to leave, play it on tap land in case I hit Brazen Bar. Look, Oracle of Moldai just never hits a land. They're drawing a Devoted Druid. Yeah, that's game. Wow. Turn two Questing Beast, and somehow the game was extremely lopsided the other direction. I kind of want Unexpectedly Absent. I don't really want Sail into the West. <coughs> Feels like I'm not going to need that to, to get my opponent here. And... Yeah, I mean, I will keep this hand. Brazen Borrower into Palace Jailer is not the worst. Probably going to lose to Mana Crypt. Turn a Weather Seed Treaty. So I get a basic land, then I get a Sapling. Um, I don't even think I need to cycle Lorien Revealed here. It doesn't really seem like getting a, getting a blue man is all that necessary. Lotus Cobra. No plays. All right. Oh, Skyclave's kind of nice. You can get that Mana Crypt. They actually might be... They didn't play a land this turn. It's possible that... Skyclave getting the Mana Crypt and blocking the Cobra could do something. I'm actually going to bounce the Cobra here so they don't get to make mana off of it. Okay, walking ballista for two. Well, I'm gonna play Skyclave, and I'm gonna exile your mana crypt, and you can do whatever you want. <laughs> I will go ahead and block. Some of my opponents like mana crypt openers really haven't been that bad for me. It helps that the cards like Weather Seed Treaty in their deck that not really a playable cube card, I don't think. All right. And Sakura Tribe Elder. Hmm. I could Palace Jailer. Seems pretty weak. Let's just let's just play three BB. Pass the turn. Cause I, I feel like if I go. Palace Jailer is Sapling, and they sack the Elder, and they draw a land. They're just going to play like a Questing Beast, and that's just a disaster for me. Okay. At some point, I might want to balance here. But I think I'm still going to crack the clue, because if I draw a blue, I could cast Lorien Revealed. And, oh, or I could cast that. No, it's 17. No, let's cast Lorien Revealed, and maybe we'll True Name next turn. Oh, Wrath of God. Wrath of God is perfect. I'm almost assuredly going to Wrath on my next turn. Though it kind of depends what they play. No, Nissa. Nissa makes that a little less appealing. Yeah, no, I will still block, I think, and Wrath. Just destroys a lot of their stuff. Ooh, Balance Zern Orb. All right, well, let's, let's start with Wrath. Play Colonnade. Not gonna play. I'm at 17, so I don't need to play the Zernorb. And I really don't want to get Rex Aged or anything. And then hopefully this is something I can spell Pierce. Escape from the Wilds or something. Titan of Industry. Okay. Well, a shield counter does not stop balance, so. Balance will still get get their thing. Mm, but I don't really want to get balance down to three lands, so let's 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 hold off on that. Reach trample. <laughs> Nissa is what's causing me the most problems here. I could balance this down to nothing. I have three cards in hand. Maybe I do balance. What if I balance and or maybe I play true name first? I'm at 17. If I play true name and I block the four from taking like zero, I'm taking a million damage. Because what I can do is I can balance, let's see, each player choose a number of lands. I go down to three lands, because they have three, and then discard cards and then sacrifice creatures. So they ultimately will lose their forest, but I'll, I'll be able to keep three lands. 
So I could balance those away and then play a true name. Yeah, I kind of like that actually. So let's do that. So let's tap and I want to keep lands in hand. So let's sack this, sack this, sack this, cast balance. I'll keep Palace Jailer, true name, Forest. And then now they lose all their creatures, and then I play true name. And then I can just play my land as well, and then pass, and then they get to play something this turn. They can't really attack with their Nissa... Nissa land, and then I get to Palace Jailer on Nissa land if I want. Oracle, oof, Oracle's kind of annoying. Okay. Into Outland Liberator. Okay, sure. Draw. Oh, Timeless Dragon's not that bad. Let's see. I'm at 23. So I could Palace Jailer like their forest. But I don't really know. I, I kind of want to get this Timeless Dragon going. So let's cycle this. Don't think I need Hallowed Fountain. Play my planes. Attack Nyssa. And I'm going to cast Brazen Borrower because I don't want the Outland Liberator to flip. All right, so they go to the Nissa goes to five. Soul Ring, Mana Crypt, and Soul Ring, huh? Good for you, I suppose. Um, I mean, they get to play Prime Time, but I get to kill Nissa next turn if I want. Their top card's Minsk and Boo, also. I mean, it's getting shuffled now. Okay, they didn't get any special lands, and they're drawing a land of Elves. So that's not. That's not the end of the world. And I'm taking 10. I'm at 13. And I guess I probably am going to lose this still. Yeah, Nissa, Nissa. Ooh. Parallax Wave. They have an Outland Liberator. But Parallax Wave is something. 13. I could kill Nissa. Yeah, let's do that. And they're drawing land worlds. Let's go parallax wave here and pass and see what they do. Are they going to outland liberator it? I kind of feel like they will. So in response, I go wave your steam vents, wave your forest. So now they're no longer things, and then wave my true name. So now it's untapped, and I guess I wave the Brazen Barber too, why not? All right, and then these come back. They pay the life, that probably was just a mistake. All right, so the Drew Lantern Elves, they're not drawing Solar next turn because they are going to get to hit with the Titan, but they only get to hit for six. And then now I can Parallax Way, or uh, Palace Jailer, and they're drawing Ignoble. I guess actually they hit for five because I get to block there. I actually think this game is now I'm just gonna win. I mean I don't know what, I don't know what their last card is. It could be awesome I suppose. Crucible. Oh man I don't have don't have the mana to do that. So let's go Palace Jailer. Exile your prime time and hit for three. Now I have two blockers for your two attackers. You're drawing Ignoble Hierarch. I draw a card end of turn. You're playing Forest. You're drawing Sylvan Safekeeper. Sure. Oh, what is this? That was their last card. It was Crater Hoof. Oh, I worked so hard. Is this lethal? I'm taking 11, 20, 
and I have three plus 13. I mean, I, I technically don't die if I block with everything and sack all my lands, but all right. Well, whew, thought I had that too. Wow, what a beat. Um, I mean, I guess I just hope to draw Thieving Skydiver a lot. They have a Soul Ring and Mana Crypt, so I gotta fade those. All right, I'm on the play. Mm, I mean, I'm not gonna mulligan this hand. And I think I'm just gonna cycle Lorien Revealed here. Shocker. Uh, let's cycle this, get Hallowed Fountain. Okay, P-Wave is not bad. I kind of wanted to save the Delta if I could for a shuffle with Jace later, but obviously that might not happen. Oh, Hex Drinker. Hex Drinker! Wow, they're going to threaten to level up Hex Drinker completely by turn three. <laughs> Pretty good. Um, I mean, I guess I have to go Oko. Oko that. It's that or face a fully leveled up Hex Drinker, which I don't really want to do. Wow, is, is Soul Ring a good card or not? I, I'm not sure. All right, so I take four, Oko dies. Here's where like Wrath would be really nice. I guess I'm probably just gonna have to Parallax Wave. Well, let's play the Delta. Sure, I'll get a trop. Oop, that's not what I want to play. I want to play Parallax Wave. Pass the turn. And. All right. Parallax Wave, your safekeeper. All right, Parallax Wave, your questing beast. I'll go to 12 here. Oracle into Outland Liberator. So this Parallax Wave is not lasting long. They have one card in hand? Nope, no cards in hand. All right. Well, oh, they're, they're cracking that. Sure, and they're drawing a Lotus Cobra. I mean, this game is quite winnable if I draw a Wrath or something. Oh, Skyclave. Yo, Skyclave is really nice, actually. So let's go land. Skyclave, your Oracle. Past the turn. I guess. Um, I'm trying to think if this is the turn I block. Yeah, I guess so. Block. Parallax wave my own Skyclave. And then I can just bounce the token with uh, Brazen Borrower. End of turn, which is what I'm going to do. Or actually, I could just Parallax Wave the token. And then let this hit. This comes in. And then Skyclave the Questing Beast. Oh, they have Sylvan Safekeeper. Well, we're not. Uh, now I have a Jace, but yeah, I kind of need to just play this Jace and draw. Kind of a bad draw. Mm, I guess it's not the end of the world. So let's put Borrower Absent back, play Sanctum, play the Zern Orb just in case. Pass the turn. They can kill Jace here. If they attack Jace with everything, but if they do that, then I get to block the Sylvan Safekeeper. They're just attacking me. Uh, sure. I guess I'll go to five. I mean, I can't beat a crater hoof, but they're just letting me jace a bunch. All right. Balance. Uh, interesting. What do I want to do here? I have a lot of options. So this is actually turning out to be a pretty interesting game. Um, I kind of want to unexpectedly absent the soaring, so they just draw it again. So let's actually put Timeless Dragon, Timeless Dragon, Celestial Colonnade back and pass the turn. And then on their upkeep, 
I'm going to cast uh, Unexpected. Oh, they have Endurance end of turn. Sure. Yeah, that's fine. Mm, I kind of want my Jace to not die. But I don't know that I can stop that. So let's just do this. You're drawing Soul Ring this turn. And let's see, they're, are they just going to attack me again? Kind of feels like they just go face. That's just like what, what my opponent's up to. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and block that and take five and go to two. And then they get another token, but we're going to balance here. And then they're going to cast Soul Ring. End of turn. Bounce the soul ring, because now they're going to discard it to balance, I think. Well, not necessarily. I'm, I'm going to try to figure out how I can brainstorm and get and get all their cards. Let's cast Brainstorm. Oh, Fast Bond is perfect. Okay, so now let's keep, let's put back Timeless Dragon, Colonnade, Cast Fast Bond. Oh, yeah. Land blue, blue, white, white, white. Sack, sack. And they're just dead now. Ooh. Opponent played pretty fast, pretty furious. I kind of feel like they weren't <laughs> doing all their considering when they were making their plays. <laughs> That's just the sense I got. <laughs> All right, you balance you down to nothing. And then, honestly, I can just plus two on you. You can keep Anissa, and then I'll cast Brazen Bar. All right, your turn. <laughs> I mean, there's a pretty good chance that I get to jace them out here. Do I want to leave them with a bird? Uh, no, I, I'd rather them draw a random card than draw a bird, I think. Because a bird is just a land as soon as they draw a land. Okay, faded that, plus two. And then I'll keep that away from them, hit. I mean, honestly, it might be better just to be brainstorming, but I kind of want to just try to ultimate Jace here. Oh, where did you go? I was gonna ultimate Jace. <laughs> oh, that deck was that deck was something. That, I mean, it was not a great deck. It really wasn't because it didn't have any particularly great cards. Like none of the really really good cards in cube. Like its best card was an Oko, I guess. I mean, Oko Oko has its moments. Balance was really good. Balance Zern Orb is a strong combo. It has been for. A lot of years and uh overall this was a solid blue white control deck which you don't get to see very often so that was cool i never got the crucible zern or fast Pond completely going but i got like different pieces going and they were pretty good the mana was pretty good this deck was just really slow was the main problem it did have force of will and solitude neither of which i ever pitch cast no that's true that's not true i pitch cast solitude once but if i didn't draw one of those or fast bond or spell pierce I was just like doing nothing. Though I did have Balance and Wrath of God and Parallax Wave, all which kind of help you catch up when, in those situations. So not the dream deck by any stretch, but it played out pretty well. And, uh, you know, we went 2-1, which I think is a perfectly reasonable record for a deck of this caliber. Alrighty, that'll do it for today. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this foray into kind of Bant Control. Tomorrow I'll be back with another cube video, and we'll see where it, where it leads, but I doubt it's going to look a lot like this. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel and you won't miss a single draft.